uh, Jesse, we got another one of your bikes, yeah. and this is a 2003 RM85. RM85. And these guys are starting their two-stroke class here, and they're pulling motors today and going to do their two-stroke engines for the first time. And one of the things that we make sure and teach you guys is that you make sure and check the vehicle over. We don't just rip it apart. We're looking things like cable problems, uh, dents in the exhaust, I mean, everything. We're literally checking everything as we go. And so even though we know we're going to rebuild this motor, we're doing what test? Compression. Compression. Absolutely. Compression tests all the time. Now, let's be honest here. Okay, when we do compression testing, if you guys kind of remember too from that PowerPoint, we talked about how we really want to uh, maximize all the tests that we can get. So in this case, we've got the carb off. We don't even have to have the throttle open, but we also want to think about the possibility of checking the spark. We want to know, does this vehicle have spark? Now this is your own bike and it ran, so you know it has spark, right? Mm -hmm. But while he was doing this, one of the things I was doing is saying, hey, uh, we, we didn't have to have throttle and I happened to walk over here and I almost grabbed this wire when he was kicking it and you can see here that we don't have the traditional spark plug like laying across you know the cylinder head like we would now if you remember when when I said we do compression testing and we kind of took some of the stuff from the auto industry what did the auto industry always recommend you do let's see if this rings a bell didn't it say disable the ignition system they just wanted to do compression testing. They didn't want spark to be present. And on some computers, that's a bad thing. If it can't find the ground, it could cause actual damage, right? And and But then, let's think about this. All you trainers out there, all you other techs, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff we take for granted. We've been doing it so many ways, so many years. A lot of times, we just think, oh, this is fine. What I like to do on this is I like to use an inline spark checker. So we're gonna, we're gonna show this in a second here. We've got a couple different tools. Where's that other one, the clear one? So we've got this one that would go inside the cap here, and then this would go on the spark plug, but the problem is it doesn't do us much good because we're doing a compression test at the same time, so that makes this guy no good. But these are great spark checkers for the fact that it catches the spark so it can't go and hit you know, a fuel leak or something. Now we've got the gas tank off. I mean, we're pretty super safe here, right? Look at this one though, this is that Mac one. And this one, it's not in enclosed, but it has a ground strap so that we can go ahead and do spark checking and compression at the same time. But look at this. I said that I'd show you a bad cap, so you might want to get closer so you could get the spark on here. Now, we have no spark plug out, but would you agree you would not want spark ever going through the outside of this wire outside of that cap? Yep. yep. You agree? Yeah, heck no, we don't want that because when the fuel tank's on here and this is sparking, what could happen if we get a fuel leak? Boom. You fill up your gas tank and you overfill it and you get gas that runs down there, you're setting things up, right? So let's see if you're going to have to tell me whether you can see this in the camera as well. I can see it get as close as you can for the. Man, that's not good, right? Right. So we know that that cap is bad. All right, let's prove a point here. I want to show you something. Uh, Jesse, go ahead and hook that one up. So this is adjustable, and we can adjust just like spark plug gap. What would we have? I couldn't see. Just the one spark. Just the one. Why? Least resistance. Least resistance. We gave it a ground. So that wasn't leaking, but back up here, look at me and we'll summarize here. I want you to think about something though. That's only us kicking it over, right? So we can only get, do you guys remember I said on an RPM of kicking a vehicle over about what kind of RPM can we kick something over? Six to nine hundred? Yeah, something like that. It's actually I think six to maybe eight hundred. I don't yeah. know exactly, but uh, maybe even a little less, seven hundreds probably. But what we have is the fact that as soon as this thing's running though, and now it's idling at 1200, 1500 RPM, you're talking about that's gonna increase the intensity. So that might not show itself by using that tool. We're actually better off in this case, than maybe just uh, setting it on there because this doesn't have a computer to hurt or something and being able to see. Whoa, did you see that yeah, one? I saw that one. Oh, wow. Get down here on this. This is just way too good. Come on this side. That cap is bad, yeah. so she's leaking pretty good. Anyway, this is another good thing you guys can see too. We got the lights turned out. 
So even thinking about on a running vehicle, it's not a terrible idea to dim the lights in the shop, get the vehicle running, get down there with good, you know, um, you know, if you have to get some lighting in there so you can see or whatnot, but you're looking for the fact to see how the wires and cap and everything's going. And the whole point of this video was we're going to maximize all the data we can get on the work order because now Jesse, he could see that he can put a cap on and you didn't even know this was a problem, did you? Mm -hmm. Would you bet on an engine rebuild this is an overlooked item? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, if it runs, it has spark, you're not probably paying attention to the to the coil or the box or anything because it's run good. Do you know how much this this cap is? 20 bucks. Try more like three to five bucks, maybe seven. They're cheap. Yeah. So this is the kind of stuff we pay attention to because while we're in here, that's a very inexpensive item to go ahead and fix and make right. Good stuff. All right, that's our tip of the day here from Western Iron Tech Community College. You can check us out online. And uh, once you get your better idea, get in here and become a student.